The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Kathleen Taylor. I'm with the Nevada Women's Business Center, and I am so pleased this morning to have a fantastic topic to share with you. We are going to discuss um, basically some really good things that would uh, really benefit a small business owner or a company in general. And we're going to talk about uh, like three core tips, um, you know, based upon, you know, Google platforms on how you can enhance and optimize your website. And with that being said, it's my pleasure to introduce our trio of guest speakers today. Um, the Nevada Women's Business Center is partnering with Barbara Oliver. She's the founder of Enterprise Publishing, Inc., MBE Magazine. And we are going to highlight Barbara and also her colleagues or people within her network, um, within uh, the small business sector, about different areas, uh, about entrepreneurship, about being a minority-owned business, um, different types of topics that she would like to share with you uh, within a series on a monthly basis. So we're really happy to par partner with Barbara in that regard. And I'm going to have our guest speakers uh, um, also share a little bit of their background with you. Uh, today, both Barbara and we have uh, the, the dynamic duo of brothers with us today as well, uh, Steve Estrelato and his brother Christian Estrelato. They are both here today to talk to us about um, some tips that a person can use, whether you're a business owner or you are you know, considering optimizing your website in some capacity, and they're going to share those tips with us today. So just to give you some background about Steve and Christian, uh, Steve is currently a managing partner of the award-winning Astro Digital Communications. He graduated from New Jersey's prestigious Bergen School, excuse, excuse me, Bergen Catholic High School in 1996, and attained a degree in marketing at Rutgers Business School in 2000. In 2005, Steve and his brother Chris created their first agency in music entertainment and experiential marketing. In 2011, they shifted gears and they are now focused on digital marketing and web development. Also, Christian Estrelato, he is the founder and chief digital officer of Estro Digital Communications. He focuses on strategy and creative content design for the agency's clients. He also graduated, graduated from New Jersey's prestigious Bergen Catholic High School in 2000 and attained a degree in economics at Rutgers University in 2004. In 2005, both he and his brother Steve, they started at their first business venture in the entertainment and marketing, experiential marketing sector. And now together they are running the show with Estro Digital Communications. Also in 2007, the brothers were recipients of the coveted New Jersey Small Business Development Center Small Business Success Award. And in 2015, Christian was a New Jersey ad club 40 under 40 recipient. So I'm really pleased to have all three of you here today. And with that being said, Barbara, would you like to share with our audience um, and also Steve and Christian, please chime in about some of your background and how you uh, came to connect with each other to provide uh, our audience with uh, some tips in small business development? Well, Kathleen, thank you. That was a fantastic introduction. And uh, we're very happy to be here and happy to be uh, teammates or partners with Barbara in this adventure. And it's, it's, it's an exciting experience and especially here to help uh, other small businesses out there. And in, in what we do uh, in digital, there's so many tips and caveats that we know that honestly, if you, if you implement a few of these, you definitely see more traction, not only on your website, but more traction in your business. So with that, Chris, I mean. Excellent. So I to, to, to let you know how I came to know Chris and Steve, I call them my boys. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, they have been instrumental in, in, in helping me put uh, MBE Magazine's website on, on the map, so to speak. 
and uh, I started uh, working with them. They were uh, they were um, introduced to me um, by uh, Karen uh, from uh, from Nestle, oh, uh, who'd been working with them, and she was trying to 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 help them, and um, she was trying to help me, and she kind of put us together and. 2012, we started working together, and um, it's been history since then. But um, I, I am totally appreciative to them. They've been very helpful in helping me understand how to work Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, and they've backed me up on all of those and other um, and other platforms, Pinterest, where we have all of our our covers on the board. So if you ever want to see all the covers that that we have featured. Uh, for MBE magazines over 30 years, you can go to the Pinterest board um, for our, our covers. Um, but uh, Chris and Steve are wonderful. Uh, they are, I, I couldn't wait to bring them on to this series, and I'm sure we'll be hearing from them um, with other topics. But for right now, let's, uh, let's jump into the current topic. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, and I'm really uh, excited about that. And we'll uh, feature Steve and Christian, and we will primarily see their screen and their presentation. So uh, we'll hand it over to, to your to your guys, Barbara. Okay, perfect. Are we sharing everything? Let, let us know. Are we are we live? Yes, I yes. can see your screen. All right, perfect. Perfect. Great. Um, and today's presentation is. Uh, Three Google tips, that's only three, but we actually are we're sharing a few more than three. So that's the, that's the little secret today, but we're sharing more than three. Three Google tips on how to optimize your small business website online. All right, and with, with that, a little background about ourselves. And about Estro Digital Communications, uh, we're experts in suburban marketing. We specialize in digital online development, business growth consulting, and seed stage startups. Our mission state statement is to deliver a creative brand personality, promote an atmosphere of open client collaboration, and stay on the cutting edge of marketing and technology. So that's a mouthful. <laughs> but uh, with that, what we'd like to do is present today, and we're going to show more so, uh, I, I wouldn't say case studies, but use case studies that we're actually implementing that really can help your business. And we're going to dive into uh, these four subject matters. One is Google Analytics. Two, Google My Business. Uh, three, Google Webmaster, and uh, four, Google AdWords. I, I don't. I, I'm not. I don't know. A lot of people out there they didn't even realize that there are all these different platforms that Google's offers. But Google offers all these different platforms to help you with your small business online. So, uh, guys, with that, oh, to, yes. To interrupt, um, but one thing, uh, could you like um, make your screen full screen? Full screen. Uh, on your, uh, on your, all, I'm seeing your, uh, yeah, more like that. There you go. More like this. Okay, okay, we'll just stay here because most of the stuff is going to be on the, uh, is on, is online anyway. So, understood. Okay. Thank you. So, is the uh, website full screen our website? Yeah, everyone see if that's full screen? Are, are, is it good now, Barbara? Yeah, it's good enough. It, it's, um, oh, as okay. you know, seeing the full, um, the full slide. Uh, when oh, yeah. Oh. For. Oh, understood. Understood. Uh, so, anyhow, um, to move moving forward, uh, what we're showing here is actually our website uh, coming from our web website development angle. I mean, friendly advice: everyone likes to see websites that uh, on your desktop because you have to also think about desktop first and mobile. But on desktop, a nice big picture, clearly explaining who you are, what you do. And also, uh, when you're on your phone, you want to make sure that calibrates properly on your phone. And Chris? Michael. And it's all about the website experience. So your website not only should look great, it should be educational as well, so you need that content. In addition to inputting your services, clients, and biography, it's important to create content that is educational and engaging. Uh, it's also important to keep your website fresh. The best way to do so is through regular blogs. Uh, blogs are a big part of your brand personality and your company's personality. Your business blog should be between 200 to 500 words, and it should clear, clearly identify your expertise, and it should contain citations to solidify its trust, trustworthiness. It's also important to note that content 
also can include podcasts, videos, and photography. So with that, that's all fresh content. That's what Google is now looking for is fresh content within your website. Uh, your website, maybe like a few years ago, um, it could have been a static website similar to a brochure that wasn't changing as much. But now with Google, it's they're looking for fresh new content and most importantly, relevant content. So when your potential clients or customers are searching for whatever service or product you have, it has to be relevant towards their uh, towards their experience. Uh, Google is looking for an experience uh, through each website search. So when you do provide a better experience, uh, you will rank higher, and most importantly, you will provide a a, a better experience to that to that website customer. Right, and I think that color to Chris and what he said about services. You really want to be very clear on what you do. So in our website, we we up front in the right beginning, it says we specialize in website development and strategic marketing and in what verticals our offerings or services, as you can see here. But as I mentioned, oh, actually here, you want to, if, you, if your business has a process, explain the process. How like, We like to explain project management. Project management is an important part of finishing any job in, in, in any industry, but in, in website development or in digital, a project has to go through six phases. So you have to explain that that's how we do, we explain the phases. And then as mentioned here with the blog, as it loads, Chris writes regular blogs, if you wanna to add to that. Yeah, so basically I write regular blogs and articles uh, and I appear in uh, our states, we're in New Jersey, uh, different um, shows through uh, the state through uh, their not just webinars but also their uh, like they have a little YouTube shows that I appear on to explain what digital is, especially uh, who we work with in the small business realm on how the, the basically tips on how to get their business ranked and most importantly get found. Uh, we're, like a lot of it is moving towards Google My Business and we're going to go over that. But when you write about your expertise, people are not just going to find you. They're going to make sure they're going to believe that you are the uh, thought leader in that realm of whatever it is. So you could either be similar to what we do in the digital realm or uh, one of our clients is a moving company or with Barbara, with a magazine, all these different things is that you have to show that you're the thought leader. That's what people are looking for now is the thought leader in each industry. We remember that you could cast a wide net on the web, but most importantly, you have to first seek, you have to find the people who are seeking you and when they do find you, you're exactly the website that they're they're trying to find. And that's how you're going to get those clients in the door or their customers in the door for you to convert. Perfect. And then with that, we showed you the website, but you can't manage what you can't measure. Chris. Cool. And let's talk about analytics. Uh, your website is the fulcrum of your branding. It can really make or break your practice or our business. While reviewing your website's Google Analytics, I believe if you could see the Google Analytics that Steve just turned on, uh, you can assess your company's bounce rate. As a rule of thumb, a bounce rate in the range of 26 to 40% is considered excellent. As you can see here, uh, so you can just highlight the bounce rate. Yeah, we have to work. Yeah, we got our, us personally, we got to work on it. We're at a 62% bounce rate. Um, we're currently bringing that down. But as you can see here, see so if you just highlight some of the stuff from users, the new users, the sessions, if you, everyone could see it, uh, page views, page per session and sessions duration. I believe um, one of the most key attributes to Google Analytics is getting these numbers. And what we do like to see, not just on our websites, but everyone else's websites that we work with, is that the client sort of sees the average session duration. There's about a two minute and six second. That is exactly two minutes and six second average on the website. So either people are reading our content, they're clicking through, they're going through the, the exactly 2.25 pages, and most importantly, we're getting new users onto our website either their potential clients or they're they're looking to use our services or they're looking to sell their services to us so meaning that all these all these numbers are a, you're able to get this these numbers through your website if you have the google google analytics code placed in there so if you can do it yourself if you have a wordpress site website you could do that through a plugin or you could put the code in yourself or if you have um 
let's see, like a, a Squarespace, uh, a Weebly, or even a Wix, they basically, basically just ask for that UA number, and they'll implement that onto your website. So you can get these, these numbers. Like Steve said before, you can't, uh, you can't manage what you can't measure. So we're measuring where we're at. We, knew, we know specifically we have to work on our boundary. We know specifically how many users we get from, from the year. And us being a service business, that's a very good number. So if you can actually figure out where is your success point with your web traffic and how you can convert, then you can come up with better sales strategies, marketing promotions, email, email blasts, and most importantly, what does it take for you to convert to your customers? Uh, and just Chris, excuse me, uh, Steve, Chris, uh, I have a comment. Could you guys please check your chat box? And I have a question for Barbara while you do that. Uh, Barbara, given what uh, Chris and Steve just shared with us, how critical um, you know, is the analytics with your business and, and how has it um, helped you to uh, streamline your your sales and marketing and promotion strategies based on those analytics well um once they began to show me um what our analytics and they usually give me a monthly report um on uh, on what my my bounce rate and and the other uh, the other items are that I, I actually get this audience overview from them and it it's very helpful in helping me understand um when I experiment and do and do one thing and it 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 changes the next month's report, um, then I can see it's either working or not working, and I can pivot um, around that. So it helps me understand how uh, how my website is working for me or what the message that I'm putting out, how well it's working uh, for us. So um, I I utilize this to to really kind of take a look and figure out what I need to do from, from you know, from month to month. Um, and I, I have other analytics that I look at as well, but I really do pay attention to this for um, our website. Um, we have been working on our bounce rate, and I think it's it's getting better, right guys? That's right, that's right, because we're, we're, we're adjusting the content um, that's where that's where the UX or the UI can come into play too as well, and and we've had discussions with Barbara, and th this is where you can make adjustments on a regular basis because you want to keep the visitors on your site. So when uh, some terminology here it says users, users are, users are actually visitors. Uh, they use the word users for some reason, but it's easier to know them as visitors. And bounce rate is actually uh, the bounce rate is the bounce rate of how how fast they bounce off uh, the homepage or literally or how like how many users actually leaves your website after only viewing one page. That's actually the bounce rate. That, yeah, that is the definition of it. So with that, I just want to highlight a few line items here on the analytics. Some things we tell people to look at is the demographics. And if you've never used analytics before, you're going to be astounded by what it, it tells you. Also, this particular function, you you physically have to turn it on. So if you have, haven't have recently visited your Google Analytics, just make sure this is turned on. Um, it's a quick button just to turn it on. Then you can get all this rich data for you to view. Perfect. So you, you can kind of gauge who's going to the site, if it's men, male or female, over here as, as well. You click on the interest. You know who's looking at your site. Um, Google, because of cookies and everything, they know who's on your site and what their interests are. And with that, and we're just pointing out some things that just gives a top level overview. Here on the next slide or next image, location, we know that people in the US are looking at our site, which is great. And it, we're, we're literally based in New Jersey. If we, or we didn't make that clear in the beginning, but we're in New Jersey, Northern Jersey. And a majority of the people from our area uh, looks for us online. And with that, we even know right here that as it loads. We know that desktop is still important. A lot of people look at our site through desktop, but as we've known through time, mobile has been growing. Let, let me build on that point. Is Since we are a service business, uh, we expect it to be mostly desktop because other businesses would be looking at our site. So they would probably be looking at our website and viewing us through their work 
station. But depending on what kind of business you have, especially if, I, uh, let's say, a standalone restaurant or whatnot, a medical office, you're, you would probably see more mobile uh, than desktop, probably by like 50%. Mm -hmm. And with that, with the bounce rate, just to add to that, let me just, oh, up here. but uh, before I get to that point, um, the point here on the next slide here, or next image, is that we know that a lot of people are going directly to our site. Referral means it's referring from another site. and organic search, people are actually looking up keywords to find our website. And where is my, I lost it. One second. One second. And what I was explaining with the bounce rate here on this image, we know Google Analytics tells us that people are coming from the US, they, they end up on the homepage, but it's all about the first interaction, um, which is their page two. So knowing your page two, you're keeping them on your site and you know what pages you want to build out. So no, people want to know who we are and about us and our services per se and, and our contact form. So again, knowing your website, not only built, designing a nice website, putting the numbers behind it really makes a lot of sense in uh, managing and measuring. And about that, it's all about conversion on it. And you can actually, <clears throat> excuse me, you actually work on your conversion rate on your website. So the first thing I would do is figure out what defines success on your website. Obviously, if you have an e-commerce store, success is purchasing something. Um, or if you provide a service, it could be a contact us page, like how many people actually input it onto the contact page, then that's where you can uh, count it as a lead and turn it from a cold lead to a hot lead. So the first thing I would do is what defines success uh, on your website? So now let's talk about conversion. Once you get visitors to your website and educate them with your content, it's only right for you to lead them to the close. Your website is there to help sell your experience and to make your business look appealing. The most effective way to do is to create landing pages with a call to action form. For example, you can create a landing page with a company special <clears throat> or, or a free download. Like I said, if you're an e-commerce store, maybe entice them with a coupon. If you're a, um, a, a restaurant or whatnot, entice them with something like say 10% off. Request your contact information in a regular, or request your contact information in a regular newsletter, and a click to call function for immediate attention. Right, so again, your, your website serves a function. Your, if you see it part of your sales process, then make it a part of your sales process. People go to your site to get more information. So you want them to lead them through that funnel, right? Mm -hmm. So next, the next uh, subject is Google My Business. So if you see this on the right side, this is actually all part of Google My Business. So if you haven't went into your Google My Business, we're gonna go into it right now. And that's exactly, everything you see here is through Google My Business. So let's explain what Google My Business is. Local Google SEO replaces the local directories and phone books that were used in the past. Google has done a great job for organizing the web with local search queries that are organized by address. We recommend going to Google My Business. Google has pre-populated many business addresses on the web. Your only step is to claim your Google list and, and update it with your business information, such as website hours, website hours and services. Perfect. And can you go into Google My Business, please? Perfect. So All you right. get there by the link, as you see, enclosed, google.com business backslash business forward slash business rather. And then it leads you to this page. So what you saw here on our search page is where you update it in here. So uh, I, I deleted some stuff on ours just to show as an example, isn't it? So here uh, it asks you for your description in this one box, you know, write a brief description. So I'm just gonna take our description from our presentation and drop it in here just like that. Hit apply, and now it's pending. And within 24 to 48 hours, that should change on our Google My Business listing. 
And it also helps out when people do SEO searches and that's how you end up on maps. So if you realize if you do a Google search, <coughs> excuse me, especially on your phone, Google Maps is actually first. And this is where you want to be. You actually want to be on Google Maps. Uh, I don't recommend not being on Google Maps, but if you can clear, clearly explain what your business does on Google My Business, it will provide a higher ranking on Google Maps. Right. And most importantly, you want to make sure your address, office hours, and your information is correct because actually Google is taking account of that in their algorithm. So if all this information isn't aligned from your website to uh, Google My Business, Yelp, if it's a restaurant or a business that would services uh, customers, it, it, Google Google per se that gives you neg not uh, gives you negative rankings, but it, it'll actually uh, lower your search because you're you're not giving the same information across the board. Yeah. And Google My Business plays a very important role in small businesses. It's the easiest way for any one of the small business owners to be found, especially if uh, what's great is like say if you're a print company or any other service that people are really just Googling saying uh, print shop near me, um, dentist near me. Those are things that will actually populate on Google Maps through Google My Business. Perfect. So we'll jump to the next subject matter. And that's Google Webmaster. Uh, this, this could be a little complicated for some people, but Google Webmaster is a free software tool that Google gives to its clients. So that's basically everyone by incorporating your website URL into the software Google will analyze the performance of your site on search some performance metrics include which part of uh, Google bot has problems crawling onto your website uh, XML sitemap specify your preferred domain identify issues with title and description meta tags and understand the top searches used to reach the site Right, and, and that sounds, uh, it's not, doesn't sound, but it is, it, it is just complicated. But again, it's important that you put the Google Webmaster onto your website. And I have a few, th I'll just highlight a few things. Like here, you can click on links to your site so you know what sites are linking to you, right? What's your most linked content here? Uh, let's find something else. Most importantly here, you want to fetch as Google. So this is actually what Google reads. Google doesn't see the nice website that we showed you here. You know, they don't see, Google doesn't read that. It doesn't see this. What Google sees, it actually reads this. And I know it's, it, it might be a little intimidating. Like, wow, you guys are actually coding here. But <laughs> it's, <laughs> you're like, wow, I know where this is going. <laughs> but this is actually what, uh, this is actually what Google reads. It doesn't see, again, the nice, the nice layout website, it, it actually reads and sees this. So you want to make sure you have a clean website structure. If you're using WordPress, that uh, you, you know, you, you, you're coding and you're, you keep everything up to date. And oh, and that's where um, on the website, uh, that's where the content management system plays a big role. You want to use a clean content management system, Joomla. Uh, the most recognized one is WordPress. So it can make it easier for Google to read all these uh, lines of code for you to be found. Right. And then with that, you also want to include, and these are things we've done in before, but for demonstration purposes, you want to add in your sitemap. And your sitemap is a list of all the website pages on your, on your website. So here, that was our sitemap right here. These are the pages organized in XML format. You just upload it, you test it. That's complete. Looks good, and that's how you do it. You just have, and you need and uploading your sitemap is very important for Google to recognize what pages are your are are, are on your website. Okay. And like Steve said, like I said, this could get a little complicated. So if you do have a uh, developer or your website uh, creator uh, that you can call, just tell them about uh, the webmaster tools. Tell them about the XML sitemap. Uh, it will only help you. For your 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 search results as a business, I can't stress it enough. Um, like I said, it does it does look daunting, but if you do have access to your developer or uh, website designer, tell them about it. He or she will know mostly about all this stuff, and that's the number one goal is to get found on Google. Perfect. Next subject. All right. Cool. 
And the next subject, this is what everyone really wants is to know is SEO, search engine optimization. <laughs> SEO represents the intent of the customer while on search. Two forms of search phrases are navigational and informational. A navigational search is when a customer searches for your website in the search bar. An informational search is when the customer searches for a subject that they want more understanding on. In order to do so, you need to think about how you want to be searched online. Obviously, your name is very important. It's actually the most important because that's your brand. If you have a competitor on your search page, it's pertinent that you work on creating content that would reorganize your company's search results. That content would include posts on social media, articles on third-party publications, such like MBE Magazine, and actively expunging negative websites. Once you're satisfied with your search page, start thinking about a five to eight keyword phrase. This phrase is your digital tagline. The creative and strategic idea behind your online presence should revolve around it. Upon determining your search phrase, you will need to update the metadata of your website. Perfect. So here, I just wanted to show another tool. Again, there's a lot of free tools online that people don't know, but from the web developer, web designer standpoint, they're great tools to see how strong, in this context, how strong your website is. And, and you see the URL right there, so you can visit yourself, websitegrado.com. Here, and it only takes a matter of a few seconds, literally. And it's a great, it's just a great tool just to give you uh, an idea of your website and its performance. And how you can make it better. Yeah. So I just let it load for a second. It's thinking really hard, it says, but <laughs> it works pretty fast here, as you see. And what it does is uh, uh, it's faster than my conversation. <laughs> this site is great. <laughs> so it tells you your performance. You want to make sure you're, you, know, you, you have a very, uh, high performing website, especially due to uh, everyone being on the phone, you want it to make sure it loads pretty fast. Here, um, in context, you want to reduce the page size. These are things to note. A lot of picture, uh, a lot of, sorry, a lot of people who have websites, local businesses don't realize they're like a restaurant might upload all these beautiful gallery pictures. On the front page. On the front page, not realizing they loaded 20, 30 megabytes of pictures. And then they wonder why their website's not showing. Well, the, re the, the reason is, is because the website can't load. It's because you're, you're basically asking someone trying to look at your website on maybe your cell phone to pull in 30 megabytes of data onto their phone. And from my understanding and from what I've been reading is that the website load time is now part of the search engine results. So you will be either awarded or penalized now, I believe, right? Correct. Be because of the actual size of your website. Um, if you notice there's something now in search results, if you're looking for articles, they're called AMP pages. Those are accelerated mobile pages that are meant specifically only for mobile. So that's why it loads in literally less than a second. Wow. Um, and we're not saying that, like, you know, like being a small business, it's tough to, to get these pages that optimized, but at least grade it, get the tools ready. Um, we're not like, to be honest, it, there's tools and there's other things like Cloudflare and all that that would speed up your website and use a CDN. But the, these things, they, they do get a little um, complicated. And if you're not, if you're not like savvy at this, it does get a little, like it's gonna get a, like, like a little daunting, but this is where Google's at right now is to make sure that the experience is loaded fast on everyone's mobile phone. And you will be rewarded with that uh, for that. Right, and you'll end up higher on search because everyone's always asking us, I have built this great website with my guys, uh, but no one can find me. And we're, we're, this is, it, it, it's, I don't even, it's not a secret. We're telling you right now, but there's a lot of work involved. That's just the bottom line. Yeah, that's where it gets like uh, a little tough is that someone does have to work on this and someone has to manage it. Even though if it's just a, a quick monthly maintenance, it, it is what it is. And this is where Google's heading. Um, it's all about the experience now on mobile. Uh, making sure that your website is 100% responsive, mm -hmm. making sure that the experience on mobile is as great as on desktop. Mm -hmm. These things do help out a lot. And I really think that if you take the time to evaluate your website using the free tools first, but then see where you want to go, especially on search, where do you want to be 
uh, in uh, on your website or how, how do you want to be found? Perfect. So that leads us into SEO, as Chris had shared before. Uh, one thing you have to note on every page, you want to work on your page titles, your meta description, which is your 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 keywords, right? And you want to in, in, uh, upload a sitemap, and we just showed you how. And you want that on your site too as well. Okay. And, oh, really quick. Um, this is where it'll pay dividends just by making sure that you're following, like, I don't want to call it Google's rules, but what Google reward awards, uh, you know, and I, I see it more like as awarding and penalizing now. And it, for quite some time, I believe they're penalizing things that a lot of small business owners may overlook, like the load time of the page. They, these are like, it, it's very, it's, it got really complicated the past year. And I think that it, just by evaluating first your current website, uh, it, it will actually pay dividends. Perfect. So uh, an example we want to share is a great local client here using, uh, we're utilizing a whole local marketing strategy, digital marketing strategy. It's rich with moving. It's a weeby. Uh, she's, uh, Cynthia's a very uh, a dynamic owner. That's her right there. And Cindy, Cindy, oh, Cindy, is a, yeah. Cindy is a very dynamic owner. She's very involved in her business and she's very, you know, she's very enthusiastic. And she asked us, oh, you know what? I, I, I want to be found more in the local community out here in, uh, in Northern Jersey. So we came up with a campaign, a digital campaign to uh, look for towns in the area. And when people Google those towns, uh, our site comes up or rather rigid moving site comes up. So one campaign was a uh, local town here is Allendale. As you see here, uh, we have Allendale, New Jersey. We created a website page and you have to create unique content. We service the Allendale, Bergen County area for over 50 years, literally. That's that's part of our market out here for, for Ridgewood moving. Mm -hmm. And some here we put a nice testimonial and information about the town that it's unique to the, unique to the town. It's not content that's copy and paste over and over again on, on multiple sites. This is unique content per town. So things like that help you on Google search and ranking. But again, like Chris said, it's if it's daunting, you think about, wow, this is a whole other occupation. I, I need a website, I need website content, I need a developer, I need blogs. I have all these tools to manage and, and make it better, but we're just sharing with you today what, what can enhance your website, even as a local business, especially when competition is that steep in, in your own town, so. And really quick, if you see if you can scroll up, um, even though they're not located in Allendale, but we like we place that it, it's uh, this company services Allendale, and we are rewarded by being on some of the top of search for this for looking if you're looking for an Allendale moving company. Uh, with our strategy, we chose to put fresh content and new content that the competitors wouldn't think of, and that's what Google is rewarding right now. And I think uh, it from what Steve said before, it, it is uh, it, it's a very it's a daunting task at first, but it all comes up first with the strategy. And the strategy for Ridge Removing was local domination. And the, as you can see, we've been on the steps, uh, we're in steps of uh, completing that. Yep. So perfect. So if SEO doesn't, you know, obviously it doesn't happen overnight, it takes time. Yeah. Subject and final subject we want to hone into is Google AdWords. All right, cool. So what is Google pay per click? Um, pay per click is a research oriented keyword advertisement on your search engine. The most commonly used search engine obviously is Google, so we're talking about Google right now. On Google advertisements, they're located at the very top of the search page. And with a good campaign strategy, you can advertise your business for keyword specialty. This strategy would increase the number of unique visitors and traffic to your, to your uh, company's website. And can you go to the login? All right, cool. So there's two. Google AdWords, one, it, it go, much more. Right, cool. one is actually Google AdWords. I don't want to go into that right now because it is complicated. Uh, what I do want to go into is Google AdWords Express. So, but Google AdWords, um, it's all keyword search. You're strictly bidding. Uh, you're, you're obviously setting the creative, which is actually the copy, where you want to place it. Um, you can even do, uh, you can even do um, display ads on there. Uh, from the uh, from the Google AdWords, and most importantly, is the bidding, and it's it's like kind of like a video game. Like, how do you bring down your bid the most by getting the most clicks? 
I, I think at this point, if everyone's uh, uh, familiar with that, they're already familiar with it. And if you're not familiar with Google AdWords, Google made this one uh, great tool called Google AdWords Express. All right. And this is Google AdWords Express. Here, uh, you can select your goal, then create your ad, and set your budget. Very straightforward. Okay. Um, it only takes, it, it just basically is just a keyword search and you put your budget, then Google will place your ad where it sees fit. Here, we can pick a goal. If you want people to call your business, uh, it will be a very mobile-centric ad mm -hmm. in which they'll just click on the phone to call you. It's great for, I think, restaurants, medical practices, lawyers, plumbers, uh, and whatnot, especially emergency. Visit storefront. If you have a brick and mortar, any bricks and mortar company, I think this would be great. Um, auto body, clothing store. Let's see what else would be a great uh, restaurant. That's a good one too because people uh, have been searching. Uh, let's see what's what's a good one. Um, sushi near me, or can I can I get Chinese food near me? Um, pizza near me, and this is a great way to to get there or take an action on your website. It can be uh, you can actually even uh, track purchases. It's a uh, it's a little more a uh, little more intuitive now um, with Google AdWords Express, and be, so you do, it's not as much uh, what's that word? It's not as much a programming that you have to do, similar to like in Google AdWords where you have to put in the site links. And these are actually called ad extensions. Uh, an ad extension is a, it allows your practice to add additional information to your Google AdWords campaign, and the, the Google AdWords Express actually does it for you. And this is the reason why if you haven't used Google AdWords, we recommend using Google AdWords Express first. So let's start with call your business. You can pick that as a goal. Then where's your customers? Um, that's fine, near, near my business. Yep, that's fine. Uh, that's, where, that's where our office is in North New Jersey, 50 mile radius. Then digital marketing, it actually picks the business category for you because it's actually connected to your Google My Business. Then from here, you can find other uh, services and products, the digital marketing agency, press next. And here, you gotta get a little creative. So if you're not a creative person writing, I would actually find someone who's really good at writing. Um, it's, you, you really have to get this down packed. So first thing I would write is extra communications that are that's obviously our business name. Then I would put headline to your digital agency locally. Then you're going to need copy. Copy is very important. So if I was um, writing an ad for our company, I would say, uh, let's see, since I'm on the spot, I would actually, are you looking for uh, website development or Refresh, or is your digital digital campaign not converting? These are certain things that you can put on there, and that's why copy is so important. And over here, you like we would put the we would actually put this into a, a landing page. Then from there, we'll set the budget. Let's see, can I get to the budget page without? Let's give me is your website in need of a refresh there you go. and you can't use all capitalized letters <laughs> refresh and you can't use a question mark or exclamation point let's say we're your team okay let's see where that goes all right you got accepted and i can add images uh we're not going to add any images i can put the logo in Right now, I don't know where the files are on this computer, but here, and this is the phone number. This is this is actually our phone number, our work phone number. You want to turn on verified calls, as you can see here. You'll every time you miss a call, it will actually email the account holder and saying you've missed a call from two hundred one five 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 five. Do you want to call them back? This is why it's very important if you don't understand Google AdWords or use AdWords Express, is that you can get these phone numbers, phone calls in and get tracked. So, and you'll also hear, I can't, I'm not gonna play it, but over here it says, you'll hear this message. It's gonna say, you're, you're receiving a phone call from your Google AdWords campaign. 
Would you like uh, Would you like to pick it up? That's what you're going to hear when you pick up the phone. Then you, it gets timed and where the where that person particular person called you from. And it's all in Google AdWords Express, and you don't have to program it. And you see this over here. It's this is actually one of the the extensions, ad extensions. You would have to program that on AdWords. Regular address here, it actually comes in as address Express. Then let me try to get to the budget. Yep, here you go, and this is your budget. Um, you just you just put in your, your budget, how much you want to spend. You're not, like, it, they'll, they're giving you the estimated performance. Um, if this was us, I'd actually set up an address account and come up with a bid and, you know, work with it. But if you're just starting out, I just recommend figuring out what you're comfortable with because it is, an investment, and if you and you are going to spend, let's see, eight dollars and twenty-two cents a day, and you're going to spend two hundred fifty dollars per max on per month. So this is where you're at with AdWords Express, and it it automatically bids for you. But you're but they're they are saying you're going to get around three hundred forty-five to six hundred views per month with twenty-five to forty-four clicks, and you are you're technically being charged per click still, um, but it, they have their own I guess their own um, uh, equation or, or uh, what you're getting charged, unlike AdWords where you're actually bidding. And what I do like about AdWords Express is that like you saw right there, you only have to set your budget and come up with the copy and your set and your location. So basically if you're, uh, let's say a, a 20 mile radius business, you're good to go right there. But I do believe AdWords Express is the best way to start advertising on Google just because it's the quickest and easiest way to get yourselves there. And when you really understand AdWords Express, you can graduate to AdWords. And most importantly, what I do like about AdWords Express, Google will actually call you after a few months of you using AdWords Express and you know you go over it. And they might even give you, like I took a class, this was like a, a long time ago on Google AdWords. Uh, they actually gave me a class. Uh, it was like a two-day class over to Google headquarters. So it's just, that's how you end up learning about Google AdWords. But yeah, you can actually graduate from AdWords Express and get Excellent. and get uh, help from Google. Cool. So I guess in, in closing, we ran over those a, a wealth of information, multiple subject, multiple subject matters, and thing and, and, and so many and so many different uh, caveats to creating and managing a well-refined website. So uh, love to take any questions. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you again, and we have the chat box. Over. Okay. And Kathleen, if you want to take it from here, thank you. Sure. That was excellent, guys. Thank you so much. And um, with with that being said, I would like to I'd like to open it up to our audience. Um, if you have any questions, we'd really appreciate any comments you may have. Um, please use your question box uh, on your control panel. And uh, please uh, submit any questions or comments that you have to either Barbara, Steve, or Christian. And thanks again for that very informative uh, presentation. I learned a, a lot. I had no idea about the majority of the stuff, quite frankly. And I'm, I'm looking forward to having even more robust um, conversations and webinars with you guys. Uh, Barbara, is there anything that you would like to add um, that they reviewed in their presentation? Um, you know, I'm always learning from these guys. <laughs> they, they, give me, uh, uh, they give me a headache half the time. <laughs> I'm sure everybody who was listening um, has a little bit of a headache, but um, I, I think the one thing to take away from, from, from what it is that we're trying to do here um, and although you said you were going to do three tips, those three tips were a uh, earful. But um, I would recommend to everyone that, you know, if you get a chance to review this again, we, we will, um, it is recorded and you will be able to, to uh, go back in and listen through uh, this presentation. It, it, we will have it on our website. Um, at uh, mbe at www.mbemag.com. Uh, if you go to the events page and under events will be webinars, click there, you'll see all of our webinars um, in conjunction with the Nevada WBC 
um, will uh, you'll be able to, to go back in and digest this little by little um, over time. Um, and that's kind of what I've been trying to do with them when they do this stuff to me. They <laughs> tell me, oh, let's talk about what we're going to do with the website here. And we could do this and we could do that. I'm like, oh, one thing. I can do one thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a process. It's a process. <laughs> it's a process. That's right. They keep telling me it's a process. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we. Um, uh, I would recommend to everyone that they they really uh, you know take this uh, one at a time. If you don't have the bandwidth to be able to do it, if you have someone who is working with you to really take um, the opportunity to sit down with them and maybe go over these op these um, options for your website. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you don't have anyone at all, you can always reach out to Chris and Steve. They're very helpful guys and you know they know what they're talking about. Thank you. Yes, and, and with that being said, I'm really glad that you uh, made that point, Barbara, and just breathing through the process as Steve or you know Chris said earlier it can be very overwhelming if you don't have the skill set per se um, or even if you um, contact or contract a f with a firm like uh, Estro uh, Digital Marketing uh, just to sit down and understand the whole jargon and the lingo and what they're explaining to you can be overwhelming too so um, I'm, it is definitely a process of just learning something in chunks so that you can understand what's going on and how essential these steps are to, um, to uh, engage your audience base, to promote your business, and to uh, trans, uh, transition all of that um, movement, so to speak, and all, and all of these behind the scenes activities into revenue and, uh, you know, in understanding the whole process of, of, um, of these tools that you can use, you know, in a way that you can just take your time and process it. It really is critical uh, to your business and worth the investment and worth the headache, so to speak, if you're not tech savvy, like, like I am, for example. So with, with that being said, um, with the audience, uh, thank you so much for attending. Uh, I see that no one has any comments or questions and that's okay. And with that, I would really appreciate any um, closing remarks from our uh, presenters. Uh, Barbara, Steve, Christian, would you like to uh, highlight any pearls of wisdom uh, in closing to the audience? Okay, yeah, that's okay, so I'll go first. Um, with this, I know this is a lot. It does seem overwhelming. Um, I believe that if you just take some time to review this stuff, I believe, I, I'm a firm believer that you can get through 65 to 70% of this stuff on your own. Uh, you don't have to hire a firm or anyone or even a freelancer to get this stuff done. But there are things that I do know if you are uncomfortable working with your website, you do, I, I don't suggest doing it yourself um, just because it, it the website is Every website is fragile, so if you do make a mistake, it, it will show on the website. But a lot of this stuff from the tools, from even to the AdWords Express, like, you know, when we were going over the AdWords Express, I believe that a, a lot of people can do that by themselves. It's meant for individual small business owners to actually get that stuff done where you don't have to go through the complications of the regular AdWords. And I'm a firm believer, like I said, 70% uh, of this stuff you can do on your own right and, and, you know, and with that Chris, i think chris summarized it really well and just the bottom line we want to thank everyone for listening and thank you kathleen thank you barbara for the opportunity to present to you and to everyone here today because it's, it's really important uh every small business needs the type of information that we're sharing today and we're always open for questions so please don't hesitate so thank you again and uh, steve barbara and chris uh would you guys like to share your specific contact information for the audience so they can reach out to you oh perfect you can you can actually um i'll, I'll just give you can actually shoot me an email my email is steve at estro estro communications.com just like you see in the in the picture below uh it's steve at estro communications.com spelled out completely 
And uh, you can you can actually always call us at uh, 201-203-7033. That's 201-203-7033. And um, if you have any any other questions about um, about what webinars might be coming up or you have suggestions um, for who we can bring uh, to our webinars to speak to you on different topics, you can reach out to me, Oliver at mbemag.com. You can see, uh, see and hear these webinars on our website at mbemag.com and uh, we'll share uh we'll share more from our um from our subject matter experts at mbe magazine um in the coming weeks and uh and thank you so much for the partnership um that you have um that that we have with the nevada um uh, wbc uh, kathleen thank you so much for having us oh yeah it's my pleasure and i'm so excited that you connected us with, with your guys. So I look forward to having them on board again to uh, share some more tips about, you know, how to be um, competitive in this digital marketing age. And with that being said, uh, audience, if you could please be so kind, you are going to receive uh, an email from us via GoToWebinar a, a survey. I'd appreciate your feedback on this webinar. And with that, if you have any questions, if you need any help with your business development, whether you're a startup or an established business, please contact the Nevada Women's Business Center. Here's my contact information. Again, Barbara, Steve, Chris, thank you so much for your expertise and time today. And thank you, audience, for tuning in to our webinar series provided by the Nevada Women's Business Center. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Excellent presentation. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. Have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.